Okay, welcome to episode 13 of the Random Stuff series, and my eventual goal is to get a Sunblade 150 workstation working again. One of the steps on the way to doing that will be finding a replacement for the M48T59Y non-volatile RAM real-time clock module. All right, so here is one of these M48T59Ys. And the problem with these is that there is an internal battery that backs up the contents of the RAM, hence non-volatile RAM. However, the battery eventually runs out and then the contents of the RAM are lost. And so Sun workstations store important configuration information in these, such as the ethernet address and other boot parameters and boot options and things like that. So when these go bad, the system can't retain its settings and it doesn't really work very well because you have to you would have to reprogram those settings every single time you boot the machine obviously that's not a great situation all right so what are your options for replacing these so one option is to do the so-called battery mod where you solder a coin cell battery onto the internal battery contacts uh, inside the module and basically it's filled with an epoxy potting compound so you need to use a Dremel tool or similar to cut away that epoxy and so here I've done that on this one and located the internal battery terminals and soldered wires to them and that goes to a coin cell battery so this works but it's not ideal for a couple of reasons one it's a pain in the butt to do the second problem is that if you don't disconnect the internal dead batteries it means that your new coin cell is effectively charging these internal dead batteries which is going to not have great effects for battery life on your coin cell so this is a possibility but it's not my preferred one so my preferred option would be to build up a device from scratch that would have equivalent functionality and would have just a normal coin cell battery on it. So this is what I've come up with is a little stack of two printed circuit boards. On the bottom one is a surface mount variant of this chip, the M48T59Y-70MH1. So I've got the surf surface mount chip down here, and then stacked on top of it is another board with the uh, with the coin cell battery on it. So I have actually gotten this to work. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it in, in the video. So the big asterisk on this is that there were some significant compromises that I made in designing the PCB layout, which means it's not actually that easy to assemble this, but if you can, then it's actually quite a good option because the only battery is the replaceable coin cell battery. So it pretty much addresses the problem with these stupid things with their internal batteries. So as I was doing my investigations of this M48T59Y module, I really wanted to understand how the chip worked and be able to both test devices to see if they were working correctly, especially being able to test the non-volatile functionality that the contents actually do, do uh, retain even when power is not applied. And then I also kind of wanted an easy way to dump the contents of these chips and then reprogram them with arbitrary contents. And so along those lines, I built a testing and programming circuit. So I'll demonstrate how that works and how I use it as well. All right, let's go. All right, here's a slightly closer look at my somewhat ham-fisted attempt to do the battery mod on one of these M48T59Ys. I somehow wound up going in from the bottom to find the battery contacts, which I don't think is quite right. But in any case, this did work. I'm not going to go into a lot of details about how to do this, but I will link to a video from Rene Reb who went through the whole procedure in much better detail than I could hope to. So uh, if you are interested in doing this, then definitely watch his video. What I think is a better replacement option is this module design that I came up with that has the two PCBs, a coin cell battery holder, and the surface mount M48T59Y70MH1. So let's take a slightly closer look and I'll describe how you put one of these things together. All right, so here's a look at the bottom PCB and uh, I'll immediately apologize. This is not an M48T59Y. This is an M48T58Y, which is a slightly different chip. 
Um, but it has the same form factor, so pretend this is the, the, the right chip. So this is the bottom PCB. So here is the main problem with this module design. This chip is wide enough that there is really not enough room to put it between the two rows of pin headers that you need in order to get this into a DIP28 form factor. So what that means is that it is quite challenging to solder this chip onto the board because it just barely clears the pin headers. But what's worse is I had to actually shrink the footprint a little bit so that it would fit, meaning that there is very little exposed pad that you can actually solder to when you place the chip down. So in the description, I'll link to the assembly instructions that I came up with. And I actually do have a reasonably straightforward way to solder this. If you're careful, basically you have to put the pin headers in first and then you put the chip down. Well, actually you tin the pads first and then solder the corner pads on the on the chip. And then essentially the key is that you come down straight with the soldering iron. It comes straight down uh, onto two adjacent pads and then you feed some solder to the uh, to the tip. And in theory, if you've used flux and the pads are, and legs are heated up well, then the solder flows onto the legs. And you might create a bridge, but you can clean that up pretty easily. So it's not actually too bad to solder these. All right, so once you have the chip soldered on, you'll notice that there are these little connectors on either side. So the ones towards pin one, these are the connectors for the 32.768 kilohertz watch crystal that that the real-time clock uses. So I just solder the legs of the crystal directly to these connectors. I think that's the easiest way. And then the connectors on the other side are for the battery connections. And so those go via small wires to the PCB, which in turn brings them up through these, uh, these stacking pin headers. So these are the sort of stacking headers for a two-level board stack. And that then connects to this battery PCB, which obviously will fit on top of these pin headers. Uh, yeah, just like that. And then you put your battery holder on that and solder everything together and Bob's your uncle. So the last problem with assembling one of these modules is that the surface mount version of the chip is of course also out of production. So I found some on AliExpress and since I do have one working module that I was able to create, then clearly at least some of them are, are good if you get them from, from this source. But in any case, if you can find the surface mount version, I think this is a pretty good option long term for replacing uh, the M48T59Y in whatever device like your Sun workstation. Okay, so once I had my replacement module sorted out, the, the next step is that I wanted to be able to both test it to see if it worked, and I also wanted a way to read the contents of the NVRAM and also store arbitrary data in the NVRAM because that would give me a useful workflow for things like making a backup copy of the NVRAM data, programming NVRAM data into a device if I had replaced the battery and the contents were lost, things like that. So I made a programmer and testing tool. All right, so it's a pretty simple device. There's an Arduino Nano, which is the brains of the operation. There are two 748C595 shift registers that are used to generate an address to send to the M48T59Y device. There are a couple of buttons to basically control whatever Arduino sketch is running on the Arduino. And there's external five volt power that powers everything except for the Arduino, which is powered from USB. So originally I had the USBs five volts power everything. And that actually got me into significant problems because if the USB port does not produce a good five volt rail, then you get very erratic behavior. So external power makes the whole thing more reliable. The video description will have a link to the KiCad schematics for the programmer and of course the PCB designs for the replacement module and of course all of the Arduino sketches that you can load into the tester programmer to make it do things. All right, so let me give you a brief demo of how I use this thing. All right, so I've got the tester programmer all set up and I have the, uh, I'm going to program the test program uh, the test sketch into the device. So this is the, the sketch that tests 
and M48T59Y to see if it is working correctly. So here is how the test sketch works. So what the test sketch does is that it used, it generates a pseudo random sequence of bytes. And so there are three phases. The first is a verify phase and it reads all of the NVRAM contents and checks to see, do they match the pseudo random sequence? Then it programs that very same pseudo random sequence into the NVRAM. And then the third step is it does another verify stage, another verify sequence to test the NVRAM contents to see if they match the pseudo random sequence. So the idea is you do a verify as the first step because you that allows you to test to see if the pseudo random data that was written by a previous testing operation is still present in the NVRAM. So the, the way that you do this is that you put the device you want to test in, you run the test sketch once, the first verify step should fail because you know there could be any contents in here. Then you take it out and just let it sit there for a bit without any power. And then you put it back in and run the test again. And if on the second test, the first verify sequence succeeds, that means that the device retained the contents that were written in the first testing operation. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to use my battery modded device as the guinea pig since I don't want to mess up the, the replacement module because that's what I'm actually using in my Sunblade. All right, so you just pop it in and press go and the Arduino serial monitor gives you your outputs. Okay, so the initial verify phase didn't uh, didn't match and that's expected because there were different contents in here. But then after writing the pseudo random sequence and verifying again, now the verification succeeds. So the data is there. Um, and then this is the real time clock test and it's quite simple, but it does test that you can set a date and time and it also tests to make sure that the seconds are counting up at more or less the right rate. Okay, so at this point, we take the device out. Okay, so no power is being applied. So if this were just an ordinary static RAM, the, the data would be lost at this point. So now I put the device back in, and now let's run the, the test again. So I hit go again. If the initial verify succeeds, which it does, that means that this is a proper non-volatile battery backed RAM. So uh, as, assuming that all the tests pass here, including the RTC tests, then we, we have some decent confidence that this module is working correctly. All right, the next sketch I'd like to demonstrate is the dump sketch. So this is a really simple one. It just goes through all of the NVRAM and reads each byte and just prints a hex representation of the data to the, the Arduino serial monitor. So there is a slight annoyance with running this sketch, which is that the, there is a bug in the Arduino IDE that doesn't allow you to actually cut and copy and paste data in the serial monitor window. Uh, only the data that's visible can be copied. So that's not very useful since there's quite a bit of data that's going to be dumped. So the workaround is to use an external program to, uh, to dump the data to a file. So I use the TIO program. All right, so I am going to tell the Arduino IDE that we're using a different serial port since uh, that would, if the Arduino IDE still has the Arduino serial port open, then I won't be able to use it. But okay, so uh, let's see here. So I'll put the device I want to back up in the, the, the ZIF socket. And uh, all right, I'll run my serial program here. Uh, okay, so when I press go, we should get a hex dump of all of the NVRAM data. So there it is. Uh, this will take a little while. Okay, actually that's done. So uh, so right now we're seeing just the pseudo random sequence that was written by the previous test operation. But if you had actual legitimate data in your NVRAM, this is now a nice backup of that data. So, all right, so I disconnected from my uh, from my program. And now this file dump.txt has all of this hex data corresponding to the contents of the NVRAM. So this is really useful because it means if you have a valid configuration in your, in your NVRAM device, you can make a backup of it to restore later, which then brings us to the restore program. All right, the last sketch to demonstrate is the restore sketch. And so this is basically the 
opposite of dump, you uh, the idea is that you fill in this array with your hex data corresponding to the NVRAM contents you want to write into the device, and then you run the sketch and it programs them into the device. So the data that I have here is actually a valid capture from my from my Sunblade that is set up with some useful uh, useful configuration info, including the MAC address and host ID and uh, some boot options. So uh, all right, let's uh, see if this uh, see if this if this works. So I'm gonna uh, I'm going to copy this NVRAM data into our battery modded device here. So um, yeah, we should see the output on the serial monitor here if I press go. So it clears the NVRAM and then it writes all of that data into the NVRAM and then reads it back and makes sure that it matches. So uh, it does. So at this point, I could now stick this uh, this module into my Sunblade workstation and it should work and give me the, the configuration that is set here. So one thing that I think you could potentially do that I haven't really tested is you could actually modify the start data. Uh, and in particular, there are particular bytes that correspond to the ID prom data that Sun workstations need. So you could edit this and uh, and then you know program the modify data into your device. And that might give you a useful configuration for your Sun workstation. Again, I haven't tried this. It should work in theory, but I don't know for sure that it would work in practice, but it's something that you could try. All right, so in conclusion, I now have two usable M48 T59Y devices, the battery modded one that I made, and then my self-designed replacement module, and both of those, as far as I can tell, work fine. I also have a workflow for testing these devices, dumping the NVRAM data and restoring the NVRAM data. So that's really nice. It means that next time the battery dies, I can restore a backup into a device after replacing the battery and things should work again. So in the next video, I'm going to actually get my Sunblade workstation working. So small spoiler alert, it basically does work. So I will also give you a little bit of a retrospective on my experience with Sun workstations uh, in general. So in any case, I uh, hope you found this interesting and I will see you in the next video.